In today's video, we're checking out the brand new Pro Tools extension, Sketch, which might be the single most important and inclusive update they've ever done. So stick around for a quick walkthrough and my first impressions of using Pro Tools Sketch. What's up everybody, how's it going? I'm Brad Dollar, welcome to the channel, it's great to see you. If you've been making music or watching this channel for any length of time, you're probably aware that Pro Tools is one of the longest running industry standards when it comes to digital audio workstations. And for the longest time, Pro Tools was the go-to DAW for the majority of recording studios across the world, not just in music, but also in post-production for film and TV. It always has been and still is to this day one of the absolute best when it comes to recording and mixing live audio. But in the time since Pro Tools has released and become the industry standard, music production workflows have changed entirely, with one of the biggest changes being the evolution of loop-based creation. Modern music creators are constantly dragging and dropping clips, quantizing audio, changing tempos and keys, and affecting pretty much any parameter that we can get our hands on, which for the better part of the last decade has left Pro Tools in the lurch because this is just not the place it excels at. When it comes to on-the-fly arrangement manipulation, changing the keys, swapping out different clips and loops, Pro Tools has always struggled at doing that quickly and efficiently. And as this has progressed, it's given a rise in popularity to other platforms like Ableton Live and Logic Pro. And so what's happened is a huge amount of producers and music creators, including myself, have moved their songwriting and production process over to platforms like Ableton Live, where it's extremely easy and efficient to bring a new idea to life, and then bringing those things back over to Pro Tools for further recording and mixing. Because again, that's what it's great at. All of this changes with the entrance of Sketch. Sketch is Pro Tools take at this clip-based music creation process. On the surface, it might seem like it's just for beginners or only for demoing, but as we're about to see, it's actually a fully fleshed out creation tool that can really build itself into your Pro Tools production process as it stands. So let's dig in and see if Sketch can be a replacement for something as awesome and flexible as Ableton Live. But before we get started, if you can do me a huge favor and hit the subscribe button, that would do a ton for my channel. I've been making music with people my entire life, and this channel is all about sharing that with you, sharing my knowledge and my experience, and building a community here. And so every little thing you do, like subscribing, liking, commenting, definitely helps, and I super, super appreciate it. So without further ado, Thanks a ton for doing that, let's go. All right, so with all the pleasantries and info out of the way, let's dig right in. You can use Sketch on an iPad or on your desktop. I'm using this here on my MacBook Pro. I've seen a lot of folks use it on the iPad. I think it looks sweet. That's an awesome thing to be able to do with an iPad. So please go check that out. I'm assuming they're gonna be very similar, but for most people, most music creators, I think this is gonna be more useful on a laptop, on a desktop, on some sort of computer that's not an iPad. So when you open the newest version of Pro Tools that comes with Sketch and you go to the new tab, you'll see that you have an extra feature now when you're starting sessions. Not only do you have the option of just starting a session like you usually do, you can also start a sketch. Now a sketch is for musical ideas, but really musical ideas can progress quickly. So it's important that when you're using Sketch and you're digging into it, that you're thinking about your ideas with where they're going to go from where you begin and not to think they're just going to stop here. Because if you do that, your ideas are going to die right there in the software and not really become anything more than well ideas. And I think that's very important with DAWs in general. It's important to record more than you erase, but please y'all put stuff out, finish stuff, mix stuff, just share with your friends, do something, but don't just let it sit there and wither on a hard drive. Okay, so just like any Pro Tools session when you're starting it new, you can name it whatever you want. We're gonna call it uh, Good People of YouTube. And from there, you can also prompt where you want it to be stored. I'm just gonna store it in my internal drive right here and hit create, here we go. So now let's discover Sketch together. Okay, so very similar to Pro Tools, when you open up a brand new session, there's nothing there and you have to set that all up. Now, if you've ever tried out Ableton Live, you'll see right away that Sketch looks very similar to the clip view inside of Live. Now, very similar to Ableton Live, the way you start using Sketch is simply by dragging clips into these individual rows for each instrument or track. Each row represents a scene, which you can trigger all together at will simply by pressing the play button next to the scene. Now, another way to think about scenes is simply to think about them as parts. So if you're building something inside a sketch, maybe you start off with an intro, then after that, maybe you have a verse that you wanna create, and because we know we'll probably need one, we'll go ahead and set up a chorus. Now, this is all very easy to change simply by right-clicking or control-clicking each scene and selecting 
properties. Then when you're ready to drag clips in, you simply go over to the top drop down menu on the left. You can find your own files by selecting browse or why not give the included samples to try to see what they're really all about. We definitely need some sort of drum loop to start. So let's go ahead and get that going first. Let's see, let's do a little uh, preview of that. These are pretty meaty. All right, let's do that. Let's do that one. Let's do that one. So this is an audio file. So we're going to drag this right onto an audio track right here. What I like about Sketch already is that it's moving you in the right direction. It's setting you up for success so that you're not just dragging clips and audio files and things like that into the wrong place, which is very handy if, you know, you're using something like a DAW for the first time or you're just trying to move really quickly and don't have time for screwing up. Cool, got our drums in there. And then uh, we probably need some sort of bass. We got a little tool bass. Let's try that. That's that's pretty fun. It's an E. Us guitar players love that E riff. And so now, because I've ran out of tracks and I want to add a few more clips in, I'm just going to hit that plus sign, add an audio track, and now I can keep dragging clips right in. So that bass was an E. I'm just going to find some sort of melodic loop in E. That's all. And you can see the key here on the right side of the browser, which is very handy. All right. Let's try it. Then from there, it's really simple. You're pretty much just hitting play and it'll play these parts together at whatever tempo, whatever arrangement you have going on. And then when you're ready, you can preview your scenes by hitting play right next to the scene you have in mind. It doesn't get much easier than that to get some loops in and get them going. Now, this is what Pro Tools has always been good at, dragging loops in, making a track, sounds great. Where it always went wrong before Sketch was when it came to changing the tempo. So let's change the tempo and see what happens. Let's make this gal 96. Single click, you can also tap it in if you want, but I'm just gonna put in 96 because I enjoy 96. Hit close and let's see what happens now. <laughs> Okay, cool. So that's a nice little part. And then from there, you can keep building. So we know we probably like that drum kit. We're probably not gonna change that too much in the song. So maybe for the verse, we have it in, and then we want the bass for the verse too. Maybe we just leave the keys out for the verse. And so that's not in there anymore. And let's add one more audio track. And let me just retitle these really quick. I think that's really important, just like I said. So we're gonna call that drums. Hit OK, and then we just need one more element because we're going to pull the keys out, uh, and that's what I want to make sure we have something in. So we're going to find one more thing in E. Let's see what that. Epic. Let's try that. Let's just try it. So now let's try playing the scenes back to back and see what we got. Let's go. <laughs> And then from there you can keep building, you can subtract. Maybe the chorus is just bass and the melody. And then maybe also you decide to have like a post chorus where it all comes in, right? So it's like a post chorus. We're just making this up. We're just we're just vibing. We're just having fun, just trying to make something together. And what I'm trying to show you is how easy it is. We're just dragging audio files around to make something. And that's the best part about Sketch. If you don't get anything else from this video, the thing to understand about Sketch is that it simplifies the process of actually creating music from scratch. So once you have your clip set up and everything is flowing the way you want it to, you can do a little bit of a mix. All you have to do is click editor at the the bottom and then just move through your tracks and change whatever you want to change that's available. Your options for each track are volume, a solo, a mute, a delay, a reverb, and a pan. You can also add audio effects right here as well like a chorus or maybe you want to get crazy and put a little saturation effect on there. So already we're making something right like whether or not this is your cup of tea or my cup of tea it is something and it's something that you can start building upon right away with anything you want. And lastly we have the global effects tab which gives you control of the overall sound of the reverb and the delay. 
which is a super simple, fun XY axis style of parameter editing for the reverb and the delay, which makes it more about using your ears and dialing something in versus trying to pick numbers or using your eyes to mix in things like delays and reverbs. So with your sketch coming to life and a little bit of a mix already going, all that's left to do is to put the arrangement together. And that's as simple as dragging and dropping the scenes in the same way that you drag and drop your clips. So we'll drag the intro in, We'll put a verse in. We might want a second verse just for funsies, just to kind of extend it out. A chorus, we can do a post-chorus, and then you can go back to a verse, chorus, and then maybe we'll do like an intro for an outro. Hit play and enjoy. And you'll see here, once you hit play in the arrangement window, it will begin triggering each scene automatically. And that's pretty much it. So at this point we went from nothing at all to somewhat of an idea that's already in an arranged form that you can start building off of, start recording on top of. And last but not least, not to glaze over this too much, but there is a nice software synth setup in here. So you can actually play some things in if you don't have clips or you wanna write your own melody or just yeah, play something in. Inside of the instrument tracks, you'll see these things called play cells. Play cells allow you to select different kinds of software instruments depending on what you need for your song. Cool kind of Twin Peaks vibe going on there. So let's go ahead and record that in. And then when you're ready to record, just like most other DAWs, hit the record arm button to make that happen. And then once you're armed, just hit record on the scene that you want to record onto and you're off. Nice. And then that's it. Simply hit play and the part you just recorded will be part of your scene. And then when you're finished and you're ready to bounce things out, just head on over to the right side of the screen, the three little dots, and you'll see export arrangement. From there, just figure out where you want to put it. Let's call it good people of YouTube. Rough, because it is a rough mix. Export, bam. And then it exports in real time and it's available for you wherever you saved it. I put it on my desktop, hit play to check it. And using Pro Tools Sketch is that simple. So in its essence, all Sketch is, is a place for you to drag and drop clips, record new ideas on top of those clips, and do quick little mixes and exports to be able to clearly and efficiently communicate your ideas. All right, so what are my overall impressions of Pro Tools Sketch? As a lifelong music maker who has been building songs inside of Pro Tools for the better part of the last 20 years, my first thoughts of Sketch are that it's a welcome addition to the Pro Tools platform. It's exactly this kind of flexibility that you need when you're writing that drove myself and so many other creators to other DAWs to facilitate that. And for many people, once they got there, they never came back to Pro Tools. So what I think Sketch allows people to do best is craft music inside of the Pro Tools universe in a way that makes sense if you're coming from other DAWs and other platforms. If you've never made music on a computer whatsoever or on an iPad or anything like that, then Sketch is a great way to get started. It gives you way more features and useful features than any of the other stripped down iPad based recording software that I've seen and used. And if you're buying or subscribing to the latest version of Pro Tools, this comes with it anyway, so you might as well give it a shot. All right, so that's it. I hope this walkthrough was helpful. I hope this gives you an idea of what Sketch can do, and maybe it will find a way into your music production workflow. So go check it out. It's worth a free demo to download and see what it's like. And if you've already given it a shot, drop a comment below and let me know what you think. Is this a hit? Is this a miss? Are you going to pay to upgrade your Pro Tools or go buy Pro Tools to get it? Would love to know what you think. So that's it for now. Thank you guys so much for watching. We are on the way to a thousand subscribers so please do me a massive favor and smash the subscribe button if there's somebody in your life you think would like these videos please share them out that helps a ton and seriously to each and every one of you thank you so much for watching i appreciate you i love making these videos for you and i can't wait to keep bringing you more until next time see you later Bye.